Hello and welcome to this video on the fallacies of weak induction. This is section 3.3 in our textbook. Let's get started with a definition of the fallacies of weak induction. Uh, the fallacies of weak induction uh, basically occur uh, because according to Hurley the connection between the premises and the conclusion is not strong enough to support the conclusion. Um, another way to put this is that the evidence does not suffice to support the conclusion. Evidence here is, is understood as information and it is un understood as information that is meant to support the conclusion. Um, according to Hurley, the evidence is not nearly good enough to cause a reasonable person to believe the conclusion. Uh, think back to what induction is and remember that with inductive arguments the conclusion probably follows um, that is if the argument is strong um, so because these are fallacies of weak induction uh, there is not going to be a very high probability that the conclusion will follow um, in, in fact the opposite is true there's going to be a very low probability that the conclusion would follow and that's why this is a fallacy remember fallacies are uh, examples of bad reasoning of bad logical arguments okay so the first one we have is the fallacy of unqualified authority um, this occurs when the person who commits the fallacy appeals to the authority of a person who is not an expert on the given topic or subject remember that the fallacy is based on um, the fact that there is an inductive argument which is the appeal to authority um, argument from authority I mean uh, and arguments from authority are not bad if, 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 if they are strong right so if, if a person is an expert on a subject then that's actually a pretty good um, that would be a good argument but what's going on here is that the person is not an authority it's not an expert yet the person appeals to them as if they are experts here's an example um, climate change must not be a real environmental phenomenon it is not a real environmental phenomenon because my hairdresser has said that it is a liberal lie. Okay, so um, here the person is appealing to their hairdresser, um, who in no likelihood is not a scientist, right? And so the experts here would, of course, be scientists, environmental scientists. They would know whether climate change is real. So that's our first um, weak inductive fallacy. Our next one is appeal to ignorance. This fallacy occurs when the person who commits the fallacy uses the fact that there are certain things that cannot be proved uh, or have not yet been proved um, in order to, according to Hurley, make a definite assertion about that thing. Um, this, is, this is from Hurley, page 145. The word ignorance here refers to the fact that those things cannot be proved or ha have not yet been proved. Remember that ignorance means not knowing, right? So the problem here is that based on the ignorance, uh, based on the fact that there's ignorance here, uh, people can argue both sides of the issue. And in fact, they can argue opposite sides of the issue. And the fact that they can argue opposite sides of the issue shows you that there's really a problem here. Here's an example. No one has proved that God exists. Therefore, God must not exist. Okay, so here the thing that we are ignorant about, the thing that has not been proven is God ex God's existence. And so the person is using that ignorance to, to, uh, to, to try to prove that God must not exist. But on the same grounds, someone can make the opposite argument, right? No one has disproved God's existence, therefore God must exist. So again, uh, the ignorance here is the same. It's basically the fact that we don't know that God exists. And so the person concludes based on the fact that that has not been proven or disproven, um, and they can conclude opposite, they can make opposite conclusions here, which shows us that there's a real logical problem if people can make opposite conclusions based on the same ignorance. Okay, our next fallacy is the fallacy of hasty generalization. This occurs when the person who commits the fallacy makes a generalization about a whole, which is usually a group, and it's based on a sample size that is too small or which does not represent that whole group. Here's an example of that. After driving for a day in San Diego, three people have cut me off, and I saw one other person run a red light. It must be the case that all drivers in San Diego are terrible. 
Okay, so the problem here obviously is that the person is concluding or generalizing about all San Diego drivers, but they're doing it based on only four people or four samples. So that's a hasty generalization. It's a kind of a quick generalization. The word hasty after all means quick. Okay, our next fallacy is the fallacy of false cause. Our textbook has three variants or three variations of this fallacy. Um, you only need to know the oversimplified cause uh, variation. Um, in general, a false cause, false cause fallacy occurs uh, because the cause that is cited for a particular effect is very dubious or lacks evidence. In the oversimplified cause variant, the one that you're supposed to know, uh, a cause is cited which does not take into account um, the complexities uh, of an issue or other possible causes. Um, so here's an example of that. The quality of education in the state of California is very bad, therefore teachers are the problem. So the person here is basically saying that the cause of the, um, the fact that education is really bad in California are teachers. And so of course that doesn't take into account a lot of other causes or other possible causes and other complexities such as um, the fact that not a lot of money may be put into education, uh, the role that parents play, uh, issues at home with students, all of these things are variables or possible causes um, that the person just totally ignores uh, when they make that claim that, that teachers are causing this problem. Okay, our next fallacy is um, the slippery slope fallacy. This fallacy occurs when the person who commits the fallacy uses a causal chain in order to argue that if something happens or doesn't happen, uh, then this will cause something else, which will in turn cause something else, uh, until we typically end up with an undesirable circumstance. It doesn't always have to be an undesirable circumstance, but typically in the, when the fallacy is committed at the end, we have a circumstance that is to be avoided. Uh, so this type of causal chain is sometimes called the domino effect. Um, when the fallacy occurs, there's no good reason to think that the causal chain uh, of these events will hold. Uh, in fact, there is no reason to think that, that because the first thing happens, the next thing will happen. So um, it's not just the whole causal chain that is dubious. Even the first step in the causal chain is dubious. Here's an example of that. If we don't strengthen our military, then we will... Uh, be left weak and defenseless. Pretty soon other countries will take advantage of us and will want to invade us. Once they invade us, we'll lose all of our freedoms and we will live in a dictatorship. Such a dictatorship will take away our rights and we will be miserable. Okay. Our last fallacy is the weak analogy fallacy. And this one occurs when the person who commits the fallacy uses a comparison, that is an analogy, that is very weak in order to make the case for something. Um, the comparisons made do not suffice for the conclusion to follow. So remember that uh, arguments from analogy are inductive arguments and they can be good if they're strong, right? So if the comparisons that are made um, in, in uh, arguments uh, from analogy, which were covered in chapter one, if the comparisons are made are relevant or are, si are similar and, and provide a strong uh, reason for believing the conclusion, then that would be fine. What's going on here is that the similarities um, that they're, they're talking about just don't, uh, don't have really have anything to do with what they're, they're trying to prove, and that's what makes it a, a weak uh, comparison. Um, so here's an example. John is tall, he uh, has black hair, and is very muscular. John was born in Ohio. Since Tim is tall, has black hair, and is also very muscular, he must have been born in Ohio. So notice that the things that are being compared here are height, uh, hair color, and how muscular he is, but those don't really have anything to do with where, where, where uh, each one was born, right? So that's it for um, the fallacies of weak induction. In our next um, videos, uh, we're going to look at the last uh, section of chapter three, which will end our, um, our discussion of informal fallacies.